The interim middleweight champion was very relaxed as he entered the Charlo Boxing Gym Tuesday morning. Over the conversations from the handful of people in the gym and the sound of sharp left jabs, Travis Scott's critically acclaimed Astroworld album plays from the large speaker on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, boxing fans around the world, introducing 27 wins, 21 knockouts, standing at 6 feet and already 173 pounds, the former IBF junior middleweight champ and current intern WBC middleweight champion of the world. From Scrooston, Texas, Jamal Hitman Charlo. I've always wanted to do that. Yeah. I've always wanted that to do that. Great. I appreciate it, man. Yeah. Give me a gig, man. I need money. <laughs> uh, thank you for allowing us into your gym, man. Yeah. We're in my hometown, Sugarland, Texas. Right off six, man. Lions only. I'm here with the champ. He's getting ready for it. December 22nd. Bow. December 22nd. In Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Barclay. Barclay, uh, Monroe Jr. But uh, before we get into that, man, I want to, let's go from the beginning. The beginning of Lafayette, Louisiana, with uh, your dad pulling you into, you and your brothers into the boxing gym. Yep. But the, the, the way you guys started, man, it was it was raw. It, it was, was rough. It, it was savage. It was savage, man. We we didn't really uh, grow up like most kids. You know, I had uh, my twin brother and uh, my older brother, you know, we grew up fighting. Fighting was our uh, first nature. Yeah. Um, it was a way for my dad to, you know, get uh, his pride out and, yeah. and the things that he wanted to do. He, he taught us how to fight. Yeah. It's just what we had to grow up doing. And I know that. I mean, that translates into the ring. Your aggressive nature and your go get it. I mean, is that where it stemmed from, man? I mean, a lot of people don't don't realize, you know, like growing up with two brothers, you know. Um, you get the best sparring at home. <laughs> and then having a dad that I had, it was no quit attitude, and uh, and that's kind of where it all stemmed from. Now, your favorite boxer is, is, is Thomas Hitman Hearns. Right. What is it about him that that drew you to him? My dad would sit down and make us uh, watch old films of like uh, historic boxers at the time, and, and uh, Sugar Ray Leonard was like my brother's favorite. I kind of always didn't want to like go his favorite, so <laughs> like uh, the, the Hearns and uh, Leonard fight, it stuck with me a lot because when I started playing football, uh, the coaches like, you know, I was a middle linebacker and he's like, you're the hitman. He's like, you know, you're gonna be the hitman today, like you know. And um, I was like, I knew, I knew the hitman. That was like Thomas Hearns. So when I started my career off, um, I had a fight out in Florida and he was the special guest there. And, and when they introduced me, they introduced me by my nickname and the new hitman. And he kind of was like, <laughs> the new he man. looked up and it was like, you know, it's like, you know, I like this kid, you know, you know, you, you can have that name, like, you know, so that was kind of what, what stuck with me. I've always been a hitman. My brother's an iron man. That's dope. That's all it is. Now, speaking of, you know, old school boxers and, and uh, the history of boxing, you're blessed with one of the best trainers easily yeah. in yeah. history you you look at his list and it's the, the everybody's favorite boxer he's he's he's, he's trained high, right? yeah and so now you're you're his latest project man tell us about the gems and the and the and the, the information the history that you get to receive on a, on a daily basis from, from mr she well you know growing up as a kid you you never know like you know what someone has really lived up to. And like, Ronnie Shields had my favorite fighters all my life almost, but I didn't know where Ronnie John was. You know, I didn't know what he was doing to these fighters. You know, I just knew he was like, he was fussing at them, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, growing up, like, being like, uh, walking in the gym about eight years old, and then 
we would have to, we would, we wouldn't able to come and train at like three or four o'clock. And that's when Ronnie was there because he was training with Vernon Forrest, Mike Tyson, yep. you know, Tuya. He had some fighters that I didn't even know about. I know Whitaker. Like, Whitaker, I don't know, yeah. beyond my days, but I knew that I saw his face like with these fighters. It's like my dad really knew who Ronnie was. Yeah. So he was like, he wanted us to train with Ronnie Shields, but he was kind of like, Ronnie was reluctant to train with uh, to train us because we were young, yeah. as kids. Who knows what a kid can grow up and do, but as we continued to stay with boxing, I say about 16 years old, he started training us. So going from like all of my life seeing him, and then all of a sudden like, you know, my dad took us as far as he could take us. And um, let us go and be the boxers that we wanted to become. Ronnie Shields stepped in and was like, you know, I will guide these kids because, you know, he knew us from, from like birth. It takes years, years to get to this level in order to, to know exactly what I'm talking about. Because, you know, this is stuff we work on every day in the gym, you know. Every fight is different, of course. So we have different game plans, you know. And with, with any fighter, what I try to do is, you know, I let them know, they look at the opponent also, you know, as well as myself. You know, sometimes we look at it together, but I'd rather not look at it with him because I want to see what he see and so I know what he feels and then he knows what I feel. So when I get in there with him every day, you know, it's an everyday thing. You know, it's something that, that, that your mind has to be clicking all the time. So when we're in the ring, you know, if he don't see something and I see it, I tell him, hey, this, this is what we've been working on. Throw the uppercut, or throw the right hand, or throw the left hand. So it was, it's, it's a pleasure to have Ronnie in my career and taking me above heights. And, you know, we've been all across the world together. Um, it's been a journey, and the journey's been like non-stop, but at the same time, like I, the time that has passed, I've looked, looked over it, and you know, Ronnie has always been there to guide me, so you know, I'll end my career with him too. Now, I talked to Ronnie a little bit in the lobby uh, about this left jab of yours. Now, you go down the history of boxing, you know, and the, and the actual science of it, the left jab is a setup punch. It, 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 it's something to, you know, find your distance or whatever. For whatever reason, your left jab is a power punch and it's put people on their asses. So, and I asked him, do, what, and I wanna know what you think. Do you think that's God given? Do you think God put the, the pain and power in that left hand or is that something that you worked on and you haven't always had? That's a good question. It's definitely God given. The left jab. I'm as I'm into my career right now. I have no clue where this left jab came. Neither do your opponents. <laughs> if, but I know that it's something that I've always like known. Like I can get um, to the next level with. Um, it's almost like a supernatural art for me that I've developed. Yeah. And it's something that I did not know about at first. And I'm learning that I have a good job as I go um, throughout the more people that talk about it. You know, it's like, they like the jab. And I'm like, I want to show you something else. Like, I have other things I, like that I really work on. Right. They're not talking about those. They're only talking about my left jab. Yeah. But, I mean, it's one of the punches that, that I've like definitely worked to increase, to get more volume out of, to throw it differently, and okay. it's, a, it's a signature to my game.